Windows 1 Windows 1.0 was Microsoft's first graphical operating system that's released in 1985. So it was created because back then, people actually had to type commands on an operating system called the MS-DOS just to open a program on their computers. But it was just too difficult and bothersome to do. That's why Microsoft created Windows 1.0 that runs on top of that MS-DOS system to make everything graphical. So people can now open a program by easily clicking the icons instead of having to type command prompts. That time, the programs on Windows were still light and simple, such as Calculator, Paint, and the Reversi game. Also, the interface was still locked in tile mode, meaning that we can't make it overlap like today's Windows interface, and it doesn't have the minimize or maximize button either. And despite being light and simple, this Windows version often had some errors and experienced blue screen of death while producing weird letters and sounds. Another problem is that people needed a mouse since they needed to click the icons. But at that time, a mouse was not common like today yet, especially since people only needed a keyboard to type command prompt on MS-DOS anyway. Windows 2 Windows 2.0 was released in 1987 as an upgrade of Windows 1.0. So this time, the windows can actually overlap instead of being locked side by side. And this feature was very useful because programs such as Microsoft Word and Excel showed up in the era of Windows 2. So office workers could multitask better, like they can type in Microsoft Word while checking some numbers in the overlapping Excel at the same time. But later on, Apple sued Microsoft. They claimed that the overlapping Windows design copied the Macintosh interface, but the good the good thing is, Microsoft won the case, because in the past, Apple actually asked Microsoft to help make Word and Excel for the Macintosh computers. And since they work closely together, Microsoft was allowed to use some of Apple's interface ideas for Windows. But later on, when Windows started becoming more successful, Apple suddenly sued Microsoft for copying their design. That's why the judge allowed Microsoft to keep this overlapping design to this day. Windows 3. Windows 3.0 was released in 1990, and it was the first version that really made Windows popular. The reason why it became popular was because it introduced a full-color graphical interface that looked much cleaner and better than the previous version. Also, since that time, computers used Intel 386 processor, which was a newer and more powerful processor in that era. This time, Windows could run heavier programs like Corel Draw and also open more software at the same time. Two years later, Windows 3.1 was released and it introduced the drag-and-drop feature. So instead of copying or transferring a file using a certain shortcut, this time people can simply drag and drop the file. And since this feature made a computer easier to operate, not only offices and companies used Windows, but now even regular people started getting their own personal computers as well. Windows 95 Windows 95 was released in 1995 and considered to be the first Windows with modern features. So even though it looked pretty much the same in terms of logo as the previous version, Windows 95 was so different because it had a much cleaner interface and introduced the Start menu in Taskbar, where you could access all your programs in one place. Another great feature is that Windows 95 already has a plug-and-play feature, meaning that if you plug in a device like a printer, your computer will automatically recognize it, so you can use it immediately. This might sound normal today, but before Windows 95, people had to manually install a specific driver before they could use the device. Oh yeah, Windows 95 also came with Internet Explorer, which introduced people to the Internet era. But that time, it was unstable and often crashed, so people didn't really use it. Windows 98 Windows 98 was released in 1998 as an improved version of Windows 95. So this time, when people browse the internet, Internet Explorer didn't crash as often as in Windows 95. Another upgrade was that before the Windows 98 era, computers had different ports for each device, which was confusing. But then Windows 98 introduced full USB support, meaning that devices like mice, keyboards, and others could finally use one standard connector, which is USB. And not just that, Windows 98 also came with dual monitor support, making it useful for people like gamers and professionals if they need more screen space. But unfortunately, Windows 98 was pretty buggy and unstable. In fact, that time Bill Gates and his employee were doing a demo about Windows 98 Live on CNN. But then the computer suddenly experienced blue screen of death. Let's plug it in. You'll notice that this scanner build... Whoa. <laughs> Windows ME. 
Windows Millennium Edition was released in 2000, and it's considered to be the worst Windows version ever because it was too unstable, opening software could make your computer laggy or just straight up crash. In terms of features, it actually introduced the System Restore, which creates a backup copy of your system files. So let's say you're installing a new driver or doing a Windows update, but then suddenly your computer keeps crashing or acting weird. This feature will allow your computer to restore the whole system to the previous moment before everything gets messed up. But sadly, even the system restore feature doesn't always function properly either. So yeah, that's why people back then called Windows ME the mistake edition. Windows XP Windows XP was released in 2001, and it's considered to be one of the best Windows versions ever. And if we see the interface, it looks more modern than the previous versions and similar to how Windows looks today. This is because Windows XP was already using the Windows NT system, while the older Windows versions still use the MS-DOS system. Other than appearance, Windows XP also had a faster startup time than the previous versions and better hardware detection. So when you plug in something, it has fewer crashes and errors than in Windows 98 or Windows Millennium edition. Oh yeah, Windows XP also introduced built-in CD burning that made transferring and sharing files a lot more convenient. This feature was great because CDs were the most popular type of storage at that time. Windows Vista Windows Vista was released in 2007 as the successor of Windows XP. It introduced the Arrow interface, which added transparent windows, called the Arrow Glass, and a 3D animation when switching between windows, called Arrow Flip, which is basically to give windows an aesthetic look. Vista also added a security feature called the User Account Control, or UAC, which is useful to prevent malware that's disguised as a software from infecting or making changes to your computer. However, both of these upgrades were actually also the problems themselves, because that aesthetic arrow interface was too heavy to run on Windows Vista. It consumed too many resources, so it made your computer laggy. Also, the UAC appeared too often because this feature will keep asking for permission before a program makes a system change. That's why it became annoying. Windows 7 Windows 7 was released in 2009, and it's also considered to be one of the best versions of Windows. In terms of appearance, it took the good parts from Windows Vista, like the Arrow interface, but without the lag and performance issues. Windows 7 also has a search bar that instantly finds apps, settings, and documents in case you forgot the exact location of your file. Oh yeah, it has a smart feature called Snap that lets users drag a window to the side of the screen to automatically resize it to half, which is perfect for comparing files or writing while while reading something else. So yeah, with all those features and no major issues, Windows 7 actually became the most used operating system in its era. Windows 8 Windows 8 was launched in 2012, and it was one of Microsoft's worst Windows versions ever. But it's not because it's laggy or keeps crashing like Windows Millennium Edition or Windows Vista, but it's because Microsoft removed the classic start menu and replaced it with a start screen filled with live tiles that showed things like weather and calendar. This might be good for tablets since this interface makes it touch friendly, but since most people use laptop and desktop computers with a mouse and keyboard, of course it felt completely awkward because we need to scroll horizontally to the right side to see the other software. Since people were so upset due to Windows 8 being strange and different, Microsoft finally released Windows 8.1 a year later, which brought back the start button and other stuff. Windows 10 Windows 10 was released in 2015, and Microsoft said it would be the last version of Windows that just keeps getting continuous updates. But in reality, Windows 10 has officially reached its end of support in October 2025, which is weird. Anyway, when it first came out, Windows 10 felt like a mix between Windows 7 and 8. It brought back the normal start menu, but kept some of the modern tile design. It also introduced virtual desktops, letting users separate their workspaces. Also, it has a task view that can review all open apps and switch between them easily. However, Windows 10 still had some really annoying problems too, like forcing your computer to restart at random times or doing random Windows updates. And sometimes the percentage would get stuck while your screen stayed blue. It even became a meme because of that. Windows 11. Windows 11 came out in 2021 and replaced Windows 10 as the new version of Windows. In terms of visuals, it looks similar. The difference is the centered start menu in Windows 11. Another difference is Windows 11 has a multitasking feature like snap layouts. So a layout option will show up when the cursor is hovering over the maximize button. This can be useful when making a PowerPoint presentation or writing a document while looking for some reference. Another useful multitasking upgrade was the new tab feature in File Explorer, which made it easier to 
to organize and move a lot of files without opening multiple windows. But honestly, there's nothing really special or different with Windows 11 compared to Windows 10. In fact, last year in 2024, Windows 10 was still the most used Windows version anyway. Oh, by the way, I also made other cool videos too, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?